after hours Lamps are turned down low After hours Soft jazz and a cigarette glow Just me and you Dancing slow while the blue stars fade above After hours, the time is right for love After hours, bartender says last call After hours, candlelight dancing on the Just me and you, yes, that's all. We fit like a hand in a glove. After hours, the time is right for love. Just me and you, and nobody else, dancing through smiles and tears. Just me and you. Wrapped up in dreams while this old world disappears of Big Blend Magazines. Check it all out at BigBlendMagazines.com. But this is more important. You just heard After Hours. It's a title track of the new jazz album by San Francisco-based singer-songwriter, producer, and multi-instrumentalist Blind Lemon Pledge. We call him James Byfield because he is James Byfield. And we're so glad to have him back on the show today. Uh, this album, as you heard, is just, uh, I mean, that's the title track. And I mean, it's a full album of this goodness. Uh, go to his website, blindlemon-pledge.com. Uh, so good to have you back, James. Welcome. Well, it's so good to be back, and I'm glad to be coming back with this uh, this album. I, I think we talked about it the last time yeah. you and I talked, and, uh, and so two years later, here it is. <laughs> I know, but, you know, it's interesting because the other – it is all connected with the music, you know, when you look at Evangeline yeah. and uh, Backwards Glance and um, in, in that it's Americana, right? And so this isn't, I know it's jazz, but to me it's a real, it's jazz, blues, soul, and, you know, I want to drink red wine with this album. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Or yeah, I might yeah. even light a cigarette, but I don't do that anymore. And I think that jazz and blues always makes me do it if it's good. And um, this album is amazing. And it's, different also because oh you've written the music like the other albums but it's different in that you have a, a piano player and and a singer on on here so tell us about who who it's blind lemon jazz right yeah blind lemon jazz well when i when i was conceiving it took me a couple of years to put this album together because i had to kind of go through different iterations but as i was working on it i realized that i was really liking the sound because i've always loved the music of the kind of you know that 
Billy Holiday stuff mm. with a small combo or, or uh, Anito Day with a small combo, that kind of jazz. I was trying to get a feel of a, like a Harlem nightclub in the, mm. in the 30s and 40s. And um, so for a period, I was singing the songs and I was working on it that way. And then I just kept listening to myself and, and I've gotten good compliments on my voice, but I just don't think I'm that kind of singer. And I didn't feel like it was going to capture the feel that I wanted. So I, and I knew, I knew from the start, I wanted a pianist and I luckily ran into this guy pretty early in the game, but then I realized I really needed to get somebody else to sing it. And so that completely changed the project for me in a good way. So I hooked up with my friend, Marisa Malvino mm -hmm. and, uh, and the rest went from there. And she like yeah. totally got into it and, and it was great. She's got an incredible voice, soulsy, bluesy, soulful, sass. I mean, it's got the whole thing. And then uh, the pianist, Ben Flint, it's really interesting to hear the different styles of jazz, you know, in here. Um, some of it's got like that, you know, that old school society piano. I don't know if you, yeah, yeah. This, you know what I mean? It's like, hey, we're going to do the little choppy choppy, you know? Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, you know, you, you know how eclectic my music is anyway. So he, he was like the perfect fit for me. I mean, we, we just clicked immediately because he knows how to play in all these different styles. And, uh, you know, I kept throwing these songs at him and say, oh, OK. I mean, most of the most of what you hear on that record are second takes. And I'm not kidding. We just went in and jammed on it and he uh, and he just got it down. Wow. Now, I know that uh, we're definitely have to play Blue Heartbreak. It's like, really one of my favorites on there. And, you know, because, you know, I've been following your music for so long and playing it, yeah. play it all the time on the shows. And I'm like, I know that's him. And it turns out, you know, I read the website. <laughs> that was you. <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. I know that that's him. You know, James on there. And, and you use your name on the front cover of the album, too. Uh, you know, saying James Byfield, uh, normally Blind Lemon Pledge. But um, yeah, yeah. But Blue well, Heartbreak I, I, is I decided, I decided to make this album really about my songwriting. So, mm -hmm. so uh, that was a, a major thrust for it. And and um, so so it was kind of like a Blind Lemon Pledge album, but it was really more about about my songs, you know. And that's why I put like the little subtitle that says "New Pages in the American Songbook." It was all about uh, really bringing the focus on the songs and part of getting other musicians to interpret it was a big part of that. It was kind of exciting to hear how somebody, you know, I know how I'd sound doing it. It was great to hear somebody else go, okay, here's how, here's how I'd sound. You know? mm. I think it's beautiful. So you didn't play other than on that song, you let them all do their yeah, own thing. Yeah, I just, uh, I basically went in and, uh, and worked with each of them um, to get the sound I wanted. Uh, so they're kind of like, they're like my brain children. <laughs> I was manipulating them all the way. <laughs> now I did recognize Moon over Memphis. I know that. Oh, there's got... several. There's several on there you would have heard before. Um, yeah. 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 No, there's a uh, there's four or five songs that that I'd recorded before. Uh, I think I wrote like four new ones, and I had a few that I'd I'd written but I hadn't recorded, and then I just revamped uh, songs from several of my albums. So. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to give them a whole, they were kind of jazzy anyway, and I just threw them into a new, a new, a whole new uh, genre kind of thing. You know, and I, after hours, I, I mean, I could go through all the songs here and I, I love them all. Um, but if Beale Street was a woman, I really, and I love the way she delivers and sings this, um, that song to me. And I'm so glad you bring in Beale Street and, you know, Nancy and I just, you know, we travel full time now and, we haven't been to met we haven't done anything in tennessee and we finally we drove from where we were natchitoches louisiana or where were we little rock arkansas i can't remember yeah but we did we do these long stretches of a trip and sometimes you don't get to stop and i had i remember stopping in tennessee at, at one of the little rest areas and then getting on the road and driving through memphis and being so mad you know you know how i get mad at technical things i was mad at this this was heartbreaking yeah. to stay on the highway and then I had to go through Nashville and I'm like, I really have always had this thing about going to Beale Street in Memphis. And I remember years and years, about 10 years ago, we interviewed a photographer, just old school black and white box camera that went through and photographed Beale Street in the 60s. Mm. Um, and it just, oh man, I want to go there so bad. And then, you know, here's a song and the song just, um, I, I love this song. It's one of my favorites. So have you been to Memphis and Beale Street? I have been to Memphis oh. and, and, and had a real good time. I've, I've been to Nashville a lot. 
and then uh, uh, some in Memphis and uh, and well as you you've talked to me before when we've we've had these uh, previous discussions my music always has kind of a southern tinge to it mm -hmm. so uh, you know it just was natural and I wanted to do this is kind of my Bessie Smith song you know mm -hmm. so I wanted to do something that really had that that feel of that early period where the blues and the jazz were kind of parting ways but there was a, so much crossover and the, and the women they call the blues divas, uh, Bessie Smith and Mamie Smith and Alberta Hunter and those were, uh, I love that music and I, and I thought, okay, this is perfect. And in fact, Marisa even said to me, well, can I kind of go Bessie Smith on this? I said, oh yeah, this is the one, <laughs> go there. So. Oh, Bessie's, Bessie's amazing. Two yeah. of my first, you know, favorite, favorite, you know, singers, just that heart and soul. And I do like it when it's not, too much and when it gets to this kind of music i don't think you can add too much you know um did you watch the thing about uh carl rodriguez the singer songwriter that um i grew up with his music when i was a kid in south africa uh sixto uh and he's a singer songwriter he made it big in south africa ended oh, up oh the, the, the 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 guy, the guy that was a uh kind of rediscovered that one yeah, yeah. it's like a bob dylan that they made like, the movie about right yeah the swedish guy did a documentary on him and yeah yeah and he yeah, got yeah. big again it's like and he finally went back to south africa and everybody went crazy and i didn't get to see that part but everybody's carrying on about him and i'm like dude i this is like we had cold fact was in you know i went to boarding school for a year and every room had it you know it's like this was like the Beatles to us growing up and yeah. living there. He was, he was a staple in every South African household. And so I, I thought it was funny when everybody's discovered him, like people are like, have you heard that? I'm like, yeah. But I saw a, ref, a, a performance he did with a full orchestra. And I love music like, you know, you know Renaissance and, and Moody Blues and all that that have that. Yeah. I love it. But it just, I was so upset about it because it ruined it. He had that just simple... Here's my song, a little bit of string yeah, sometime, yeah. depending. But and if you if you do that to what you're doing, I think it would ruin it. There's this special thing about having that quiet, compact band and the emotion to flow. I don't know. It's I, yeah, it, I know. I totally agree. I've I, well, I've I've just always been drawn to small combos and stuff uh, much more than big bands and orchestras. You know, just just my particular taste. So mm. all my all my records kind of reflect that earthy and just straight up like you could just pull over and start playing somewhere you know what i mean and by the <laughs> way i want you to know your music goes really well in the south okay your, oh, good. your music plays well in kentucky too i'm just gonna say <laughs> that it does good road trip music for when you get lost on a backcountry road and by the way you when you're in kentucky everyone fill up your gas tank <laughs> It's like northern New Mexico, because you never know, because you could just be on this road for miles, and you're like, where's everybody? <laughs> but it's it's beautiful out there, and your music really complements it when you're on a road trip through there, so oh, I want to say know. that. Yeah, yeah. Now, I want to bring up ketchup spaghetti, because this is so fun, um, and I'm just like, what is this, like a spaghetti western for jazz music? Tell, tell <laughs> us about this song, and we've got to play it, too. Uh, well, it um, you you remember that song I had a while ago. In fact, I think you used to play it in one of your sh your eating shows or something about um, ham uh, eggs, flapjack stack, yeah, ham and eggs and flapjack yeah. sack. Ham and well, eggs. Well, this is kind of my 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 second food song, <laughs> and uh, and I I kind of I was um, watching actually Gold Diggers of 1933, I think it is, where they have uh, the a big production number over Brother, Can You Spare a Dime. And mm -hmm. uh, and that inspired me. I was thinking about somebody because that's so kind of depressing and sad. Well, this I thought about this guy that's like down on his luck and terrible, but he's just got the sunniest attitude. Like he's living like a king. So so it all just flowed out of me. You know, it's as I just had pictured this guy kind of, you know, making the best of what he had, and uh, and then just the whole little story kind of fit into my brain as they often do when they're when they're good songs and so it just kind of spit out and there it was i love it let's play it for everybody here it is okay ketchup spaghetti and uh i know we've all had that once in a while right the spaghettios <laughs> in a can <laughs> here yeah. it is <laughs> Ain't never 
never had much more than two nickels at one time. And when they rub together, they don't add up to a dime. I got holy Moses socks and cardboard in my shoes. And my wall is papered over with last year's local news. But when I'm feeling hungry and I hear that dinner chime, well, I got fixings fitting for a king. Tell me, man, what's on the menu? What's it gonna be? Ketchup, spaghetti, and collard greens smothered in government cheese. Prefix or a la carte, you know it's bound to please. Ketchup, spaghetti, and collard greens smothered in government cheese. Some love Chateaubriand, but it's minute steaks for me. And wash it down with Pruno Vintage 1983. Top ramen tops my table and spams my car de jour. Sloppy Joe's hot dogs and beans and tuna melt for sure. A little dumpster diving, I got no reservations. You'd be surprised what some folks throw away. Tell me, man, what's on the menu? What's it gonna be? Ketchup, spaghetti, and collard greens smothered in government cheese. Prefix or a la carte, you know it's bound to please. Ketchup, spaghetti, and collard greens smothered in government cheese. Some folks crying they're too poor, but I'm not that fella. Even if I got no beef, there's still hamburger helper. Big feet, grits, and sandwich spread, fried bread, and black eyed peas. Ketchup, spaghetti, and collard greens, smothered in government cheese. Ketchup, spaghetti, and collard greens smothered in government cheese. Ketchup, spaghetti, and collard greens smothered in government cheese. You're listening to Big Blend Radio, and you just heard Ketchup, Spaghetti, and that is on the brand new album out now called After Hours by James Byfield. Uh, written all the music written by him. He performs on one of the tracks, and an incredible singer. Uh, Marisa Malvino and uh, pianist Ben Flint, and uh, that is so much fun. You know, when you listen to the song, it does actually. I have to say, when I, I'm going back to boarding school for some reason again, that you're in boarding <laughs> school, they used ketchup on pizza. They would make like almost like pie. Oh. But this is South Africa. Maybe they don't know how to make pizza there. I know pizza <laughs> places there, and it was ketchup. With oh, like, that's bad. <laughs> although we all like at the end of the day with the. The food was so bad that we actually all rooted for that day, and the pizza <laughs> day. So I just want you to know that sometimes ketchup spaghetti is really good. <laughs> if you don't have it, right? If you don't have it. If you it, don't have it, then you got real it. Stuff. I want to bring up uh, Buddy Bolden. Tell us about him. Uh, well, Buddy Bolden is a famous mythological figure in jazz. He's... Um, uh, he was never actually recorded, but he was uh, often cited as a seminal figure in the change from uh, uh, ragtime to jazz. 
and uh, he put together a band and and they were responsible for kind of moving the beat out of a ragtime beat into a jazz beat and uh, then people like Louis Armstrong and uh, and, mm. and, and Kid Ory and a bunch of other people were influenced heavily by him and uh, I don't re exactly recall what it was that spurred me but I was thinking about Buddy Bolden and uh, and just uh, the whole song came to me. It's kind of based on the melody and the structure is based on the uh, um, St. James Infirmary kind mm -hmm. of style. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in fact, I even cop a couple of lyr lyrics like it, the, the Six White Horses lyrics and stuff like that that's in it. And so I wanted to capture that flavor of old. I I'd love to hear this played by, if we if it was in a bigger thing, like the, the Preservation Hall Band or yeah. something. That, that kind of real New Orleans jazz, that, that was what this was going to be. And originally I was planning to actually have a horn break on it, but I liked what the pianist was doing so much. I just, I just kept it that way and I wanted to keep it simple anyway. Oh, but um, mm -hmm. so that, that was that. It was, uh, you know, just kind of an ode to, to the, the early stages of jazz and blues and all that kind of stuff. And since this album is kind of a celebration of, uh, jazz as a, an American art form, uh, you know, he seemed like a, a natural to have in there. Well, it's interesting when you talk, you know, jazz being Americana, right? And they say, you know, like we have basketball and um, that's, you know, America's thing, right? Basketball. I'm not a sports person, so don't mm, yeah. get mad at me, everybody out there. I don't know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Um, and obviously I didn't grow up here. So, uh, but when it comes to jazz, I find that interesting because they say jazz is, you know, America's art and this is america's you know this is the one main american thing and i i i just i don't agree with that i'm sorry i know it's americana because it's you know americanized and that people are playing it but i have a hard time with it because i heard jazz in in different countries and i think about latin music and i go is it really it's a celebration of american music because it's all these different cultures coming together here in america so that right, would make right. it American. So I just got to, so on that level, I go a hundred percent, but I heard jazz, you know, in, in, you know, in muddy hut areas, you know, in, in Kenya and stuff as I was, as a kid, um, in different tribes that, you know, have not been, you know, out to the city kind of thing. Right, so I've right. heard that kind of rhythm and, um, but it is different, but I hear jazz in just about everything, you know, even the well, Almond you know, Brothers, I, uh, right? Look. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 you know, it's, it's derived from all these various sounds that came. It is the classic melting pot music. You're, you're exactly right. Only, only America could in, have invented it in its complete form. I think it grew on all this stuff from Africa okay. and these other places, but, but it was the combining of the European melodic sense and the African rhythmic sense and all these things that put it, put it together, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it's everyone coming together, and you can hear it in different. I don't know musicians who. I mean, most musicians always go like, "There's jazz in there," you know. There's they go back to that because I think it's that's where the risk taking is, but it's at the same time also the real flow of letting something yeah. happen. I don't know, you know. It's like it, it's interesting, and that's what I love about your album is you have all of these different goodies in there. Every song is different, yet it still flows. And you have a talent for that to make it all flow together. Um, one of my one of my really favorite songs really is "Lights Out" too. That oh, it just feels like you know going from after hours to that. It's kind of like okay, we're 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 ending the journey now. And now I really do want to have a cigarette and sit outside and, turn, <laughs> and look at the stars. I don't know, man. It's just, you know, I'm not smoking well, thank, ever again. Thank you for <laughs> catching that because you're, you're the only I, – I, I did it as this very specific thing to start with hour, after hours and end with lights out. But you're the only person I've talked to that caught that that completion of the circle so congratulations oh well thank you it's, you know <laughs> but no i love this music i i really really love this and uh, i i think to me this is one of my most favorite albums of yours but then i'll oh, listen to you, so you know evangeline tomorrow and i'll be like no well, i'm back here again <laughs> you know but so that, that's that's good but lights out to me um i i just i there's just something special because I'm like kind of a reverse morning person driving through watching people wake up and turning the lights on. But there's a magic of seeing the end of the day as people turn yeah. off the light and wonder, okay, what are they thinking about when they go to bed? You know, 
what are they doing? You know, <laughs> what's yeah, going on? You know, so what are those conversations or, you know, are you having a cigarette in bed and then going to, you know, set your house on the fire <laughs> or whatever it is, but you know, lights out, tell us about that. Uh, well, it's actually a lot of the songs on here are really old. Um, lights out is, is, is probably about, I want to tell you how old, but very old. <laughs> and I wrote it many, many years ago. Um, I actually wrote it uh, in Sausalito, mm. sitting, uh, looking across the bay as the lights twinkled out uh, on the island that's across the bay from Sausalito. And um, I just, uh, you know, it just as with so many songs, it just popped into my mind. It's gone through. I've had it so long that I've I've changed it here and there and rewritten little parts here and there, but it's pretty much basically the same was and it's just a, a pure luscious love song that's mm. that's what i i just pictured it as and and that's that's what it's all about see and then ending the album with blue heartbreak it is like that's it now i'm now i'm sad because it's over it's like yeah. i've just done this beautiful album and now it's the process is over do you feel sad like that once you end a production are you like okay it's done i'm happy um it's weird. Like we will put, we'll put all the work into a magazine and we're all into it. And then like three days later, I can't even remember what's in it, you know? <laughs> well, no, I could, I could definitely, the thing about making an album is you end up listening to the same song so many times <laughs> that they're like completely in your DNA by the time yeah. you're done. So, yeah. so, uh, so, you know, I don't, I don't think I've ever had that sense of, I know what you're saying, kind of disappointment, you know, let down at the end. I'm usually pretty stoked on it. And this one, this one's got me stoked. And then uh, I usually just get on to the next project. So that's, that's what I've done already is start, start a new one. But Yeah. But, Cause it's the creativity to me. I enjoy the creativity part. And there's always yeah. that, that uh, you, you, when you have the conception, the idea of it, and then you go to do it and it's like, it, it can be frustrating at that point. And then all of a sudden magic happens. There's that one oh, part, yeah. you know, cause I know you're, you know, you do digital design and everything too. So, I mean, you're in the creative world, you know, a hundred percent. And there's that, you know, idea. Then you start to go to paper and you're like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are we going to do it? You know? So putting an album together, it just, to me, I, I want to stay creating it. I don't know. How do you know when to pull out? Pull out in terms of, you know, I mean, like call it's it into now. it or? Yeah, it's like, oh, okay, oh. don't overdo the um, song. You know, that's an interesting question because I've never really thought about that. I, I do know that that I kind of have a rule for myself that um, I always strip anything out that I don't need, whether I'm I'm writing the, when I write a song and I finish the song, I'll then sit down and just cross out any line that doesn't you know anything i think is fat that doesn't contribute to the the meaning of the song or the direction i want to go sometimes whole stanzas come out you know i just i like to pare everything down so when i'm in the studio it's kind of the same thing it's like i'll add an instrument if i think i need it but if i don't need it or i can get away without it or whatever i just don't put it in i, I like to keep things um, real direct and and so that's why this one just has you know four musicians on it other than myself you know it's it, 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 i think we've talked about this before it's about killing the babies you know you, yeah, think you yeah. really want it and then it's like no that goes and you're like oh you know <laughs> you have to but yeah yeah oh, no exactly the editing process is cruel <laughs> it's cruel <And> some, <laughs> sometimes it's good but it's like oh you know doing that so i think it's that's just a good sense of rule like if you're a writer or a, a you know, a filmmaker, all of us, you know, you gotta, you gotta cut it away. When you were writing this album, because you're doing the lyrics, you're doing the music, were you writing it on piano since, you know, piano so predominant or are you writing on your guitar? No, I, I, uh, I, I know a little tiny bit of piano and even saying the word no with that is, is a misnomer. <laughs> I understand how piano works. Um, but, but my guitar playing is, is very pianistic. So I, I, I studied jazz many years ago and learned a uh, jazz chord. So it's not a problem for me to, to write on my guitar in jazz. And then what I did with this from the beginning, once I uh, hooked up with Ben Flint, the pianist, um, I just basically said to him, okay, here's what I've got. Now you take it to the next level. That's why I gave him an arrangement credit on it. Cause, mm. cause he would take, uh, you know, I would have, 
three chords in a row and he would like slightly modify the chord or you know try a different thing and and the melody and the and the and the lyrics stayed the same but suddenly the the chords which determine the harmonic uh references would change with what he was doing because i just said to him you know let's let's jazz this up i mean if i'm halfway there get me all the way there kind of thing mm -hmm. so he was he was a super important part and we we worked on it he was the first musician i recorded i mean i literally went in one day and and uh, the, fir the first day we met we just went in and jammed on the songs and 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 so he could get a feel for how they were going and then uh and then i I decided to build, and this is a little bit different than the way people usually do. You, people usually lay down uh, the drum and the bass first, mm -hmm. but I decided to work the other way and lay down the piano first and kind of have it dictate everything that came after it. So That is so, different, yeah. Yeah, it was like I loved what he was doing so much, and I thought, you know, rather than him having to fit what the drum and bass were doing, I was going to have them fit back to what he was doing. So... We recorded him with a with a click track, so it was on time. And then I had the bass player. I just gave the bass player the tapes, and I said, uh, "Just learn this guy's part." You know, what I had him do was basically play a bass note that matched the piano bass mm -hmm. notes, mm -hmm. and then and then I offset it slightly so that the bass kind of gave a, a mushy slide into the piano mm -hmm. bass notes. And then, um, and then the drummer, who was the last one recorded, I just gave him everything, and I said, "Okay, you know what you want to do now is just really the drum should enhance all of this, you know." Yeah, so, wow. so that's, that's a, how, that, yeah. How did he feel about that? I mean, really, as a drummer, now now it's all on you. Like here it is. Oh uh, well, he he was cool with it. it. It was interesting too because the first the first track he played. He 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 was young and full of talent and stuff, and he uh, and and he he like had all this stuff in it. I said, okay, I know that you're really good. What I'm going to ask you to do now is cut back and make this as simple as you can. You know, you want a picture? I said, you just got a picture that you're sitting in a Harlem nightclub with a cigarette dangling from your mouth and a drink on the table, and you're just cool. You know, this needs to everything needs to be cool and easy and and uh you know full of love and so uh -huh. that's where he went so wow that's what... i want to give him a shout out uh you've got peter grinnell uh on, on bass, bass yeah. and and then joe kellner on joe drums. Kellner, yeah. yeah so got to give him a shout out man i i do okay this is the weirdest thing about jazz okay i know mm -hmm. they call them like cool cats and jazz cats and everything right you know yeah. the term goes around but really, don't you see cats? You know, like we had this cat, Morris. He was a, we called him Poochie Boy. He was a, like, he had the beautiful blue eyes, gray cat. They're like a Siamese, but he was fat, man. But he would strut and he'd have his tail up. And we'd play music to him as he would walk around, you know, because he'd be, he'd be doing this little strut. And so, yeah. like, rich people in love, I see him strutting through. And I'm like, <laughs> Where did the whole jazz cat, cool cat come up? Because it, it, what is it about it? Because you do, like when you listen to jazz, like I see cats running around and doing things. What is that? Where did that come from? Is it really? Well, I guess cat, cats are just cool, you know, as opposed to dogs, which are not cool animals. Cats oh. are like reserved. <laughs> I mean, no, dogs are fun animals and loving animals, but they're hardly ever cool. Cat, cats are more like musicians in a way. It depends. Uh, oh my gosh. Now I could, yeah, I'm going to do like what Frank Zappa did. Have you ever read his biography? Where he no, just, I have not done that. Oh my God. It's one of the best books ever. Oh, I have to get that. He, I didn't he, know he had, yeah. yeah, he wrote this and he did the, oh my God, if you're, I'm got to watch my language on here now. But like he was basic, it's not my language. It's just, you know, the parts of the body. Let's put it that way. Uh, lead yeah. guitarists are known for one thing kind of deal. And that's why they're playing that. <laughs> um, and then it's like he went in and took like the keyboardists are doing this is what they are. And, you know, there's just basically about their personality and, you know, and body parts. Let's just say that. Um, and yeah. I'm not going to go further in that. But I'm thinking okay. now I want to take a band and do what he did and put like different animals to it. <laughs> so if you're a jazz <laughs> pianist, you are a cat like Morris. <laughs> you got to have the exactly. spreading one. And you could have the cats with the jewelry on and the little ribbon and look at me. You know what I mean? But Rich yeah. People in Love is a cat song. I'm just saying. 
<laughs> I don't know how else to say that, but it's a cat song. But then you do have the cats that are sitting there like, hey, man, I'm, you know, I've got my jacket on and cigar and, <laughs> you know, so anyway, I know I just got really weird. But anyway, it's, it's, that's the thing about jazz. It's cool. Do you like Nina Simone? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. She's one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, of women jazz singers. I just have always been, and so she's definitely mm. up there in the list. Man, it's but uh, I'll tell you, my my all time favorite's Anita O'Day. I I don't know why, mm. but I just am totally hooked on Anita O'Day. Mm. So a yeah. lot of times I was a lot of times I was picturing her singing some of these songs. You know? Well, it's interesting when you talked about how you recorded this with you know the drums first, and I mean at the end. And it really, to me, Marisa just ties everybody together because she's kind of like this. She's got such a velvety voice, you know. Oh God, I love her voice. I love her voice. And I and literally, the day I first met Marisa was at a jam session, and I just fell in love with her voice. And I started thinking about a way I could record her. Well, you know, she was the backup singer on my uh, folky album, mm. uh, Backwoods Glance. Mm -hmm. And she did one solo song on there, and then, um, and then when I decided I needed a singer other than myself for this album, her her name just leaped to my mind, and I went and presented the songs to her, and she to like totally fell in love with the project. So that was that was wonderful. It's an awesome project. What's next? What's next? Well, I'm actually going to record my uh, my Blind Layman Pledge band, which I've never. Well, I did many years ago in a different iteration of it, but uh, this is the current hot band. And um, so I laid down the first tracks on that the other night. We're going to do uh, 13 songs. And uh, my current band has this uh, killer violinist in it and a mm. harmonic player, a uh, bass, drums, and myself on guitar. And uh, I think it's going to be good. What <laughs> is it? Is it going to be swampy or like backwoodsy? Yeah, it's, like. It, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be our, our uh, we do kind of blues and Americana stuff. So mm -hmm. it's definitely going to be a heavy kind of bluesy thing um, with, with you know, we do acoustic blues. So it's got this, this definite uh, acoustic quality to it. But when I, was, I think it's going to have a kind of a lot of rockabilly tinge to it too. Ooh, I, just what I was ooh. hearing the other night, kind of spooky vocals ooh. and stuff like that. But, ooh. Uh, yeah, I, like I think, that. I think you're, I think you're going to like it. It's going to be good. And then we're going to do 12 originals. And then we have a a really strange and amazing version uh, that we do of House of the Rising Sun that people always go crazy for. So we're, we decided we're going to put that on there, too. Oh, man. You got you know, that's still like one of the – it's like St. James Infirmary you were talking about earlier. It's like there are certain songs that will just – you just got to keep them out there, and they'll never die. But we oh, got yeah. to – Exactly. They're just they're classics that have to keep going, and I think what's great about what you're doing is you're keeping you're carrying the torch for these this these genres of music, you know. And, oh yeah. And, and you're doing it with your own music too, and then also yeah, you've got your covers here and there, but um, I think it's it's awesome. It's really awesome. It it's going to be good, and I love the rockabilly side, man, because that can get weird. Rockabilly's got a weird thing to it. There's like a mystical thing to it that you. That's where, like, you know, I don't know. I got, I like the whole swampy backwoodsy thing because there's. Oh yeah, like, me too. There's like a weird. It's like reading southern fiction, right? It's the same mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, there's always something mystical and magical. Well, thank you so much, uh, James. It's always a pleasure having you on the show. And oh, I'm please... glad we got hooked up again. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's been a few years now too. We've known each other what about four or five years, so that's kind of. Cool. I know, and I'm getting younger every day. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding, but you know, hopefully we'll see you when we get up to the Bay Area. Um, on oh, our that'd be great! Now, yeah, because now we're on the road 100, percent and um, I know that we're probably destined for that this coming year in 2020. Um, oh, that'd be least, great! Yeah, get together for lunch or something. Be fun. Yeah, to have a jam session. Come on, have a jam session. Yeah, yeah, I've got a thing. I'm working on something very, very cool, and I'll tell you later. But. Um, uh, very, very cool, and, and uh, just from conversations with musicians on the shows, and I'm figuring out a way where we're going to have our own music festival uh, virtually with musicians in parks, and I'm going to do something. Oh, very, I've got an idea. I'm going to I'm going to make it happen, and um, it's I I know how to do it, and it's going to be really killer. So I'm just saying, you got to go to a park 
with your guitar. <laughs> I'll, I'll be there. Soon, <laughs> soon. So a jam session could be really cool. I got a project I'm working on. But everyone, again, the album, go get it after hours. It's out now. Go to blindlemon-pledge.com. And uh, we want to thank our sponsor of, of the segment. We love them, the National Parks Arts Foundation. I think they're the sponsor every time you're on the show, James. Uh, yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. Every, you know what? They do such awesome things. So many songwriters are coming through there now. They have a special Hawaii Volcanoes one just for uh, songwriters where uh, you can go and stay for a month and create in, uh, in this beautiful house. And they have a recording studio. I'm just saying, I keep telling you, you got to go, James. you got to go do. to Hawaii for a month. You know, <laughs> I know. So everyone check them out at I'm, National Parks Arts Foundation dot org. What, what were you saying? Uh, no, I was just saying that sounds great. <laughs> I know. They, well, they have a residencies in like uh, Chaco Canyon uh, up in northern New Mexico. Just went there. It's amazing. Uh, dry Tortugas. You can be on an island for a month and create music or art and write. Do you know they had their first playwright? Um, we just interviewed. Uh, it's just amazing. I think this program is so cool to be in a park for a month. Gettysburg. You could do a Gettysburg album. That would be oh cool. Oh my God. I was just thinking like that is a project for you. I have a feeling. I, like, I think you, you're right. I like the idea. Of that. Oh my God. An album of Gettysburg because it is talk about Americana, right? North and South. Well, I know. And we we may be in a new civil war before we know it. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I know. Well, well, I do know that you get to stay in the Klingle farmhouse, which apparently is haunted. And um, Oh, is that right? Well, I could yeah. go for that. I know. There's a song right there. <laughs> I know. Well, so one of the photographers that stayed there sent me photos. He went downstairs in the morning, and it looks like blood on the walls. And then mm. in the afternoon, it was gone. Huh, interesting. So I'm just saying, I think you should, I don't want anything bad to happen to you. Nothing's bad, but has happened. But they do have a peach tree and people make peach pie there all the time. Um, yeah. But Gettysburg, I think that that would be, I, you know, I want to send you to Hawaii. I can't send you anywhere, but personally, if, <laughs> if I had the could. magic wand, I would say like, if you did Gettysburg, I, I could either, I could almost guarantee that somehow you're going to put the little, you know, the little drummer boy in there. You know, the little, <laughs> what's the guy that goes out and hear, oh, why would they do that to the little kids? Put them out in the war. Hey, it's we're marching with the drums. And why would they do that? I don't see uh, I don't know. I don't but um, yeah, you know, we've done things to kids for years. But anyway, on a good note, here's Blue Heartbreak. I know, right? <laughs> this is <laughs> it. And everyone, uh, this features James on guitar and singing. And it's an awesome song. Uh, thanks again, everyone. You can keep up with us at BigBlendRadio.com. We now air our shows. Our segments go live Sunday through Friday, and it's probably just going to go daily at this point. So uh, BigBlendRadio.com, you can uh, listen to episodes from all kinds of outlets, whether it's iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Facebook, you name it. It's all there. Thanks so much, James. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Talk to you soon. comes and I know it will I'll cry and I'll beg and agree to whatever it takes but the words that I hear when you end that call I sound like when my poor heart aches I wipe my and shake my head And I wonder what I'm gonna do Blue, blue heartbreak Heartbreak's just another name for blue There was a time I remember well Her life was a sweet melody Just made for two 
But time takes its toll And the new grows old Yes, I knew when we were through We'll still be friends mm, That's a lover's lie We both know that could never be true Just another name for blue My friends they call To commiserate They say I shouldn't think I did anything wrong It's clear my friends ain't right this time Cause I knew They say I shouldn't think I did anything wrong I know my friends ain't right this time Cause I knew what was wrong all along If I could walk in back in time There's so, so many things I wouldn't do Blue, blue heartbreak Heartbreak's just another name for blue Just another name for blue